James chapter 2, verse 17, it says this, Even so faith, if it has not works, and this word works is not meant works to earn something, it means corresponding actions, actions yeah. that correspond with your faith. That's, good. Amen. That's what it means. So even so faith, if it has not actions that correspond with faith, yeah. it's dead. Isn't that something? You can have faith and it be dead. Yeah. God has given to every man the measure of faith. What measure did He give him? He gave him the beginning portion. And it's up to us to increase that measure of faith. Yes. Amen. But He gave us our faith in seed form. Mm -hmm. And as we water it and cultivate it, that faith can grow. And uh, if we're not careful, that measure of faith that's in us, if we're not putting yeah. right actions with it, that faith will be become dead. Sure. And this is what James is warning us about. Mm -hmm. uh, he said, even so faith, if it doesn't have actions that correspond with the faith, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, is dead being alone. Mm -hmm. So faith isn't happy being alone. It's got to live with act. That's right. Right. Amen. It's got to live with an act. Yeah. It's got to have a, a way to flow. And actions are the right. way right. faith is able to flow. Yes, a man may say, thou hast faith and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works and I'll show you my faith by my works. Mm -hmm. Verse 19, thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The demons also believe and tremble. Yes. Notice, the demons also believe and tremble. Yes. Demons know some things and believe some things, but they never acted in line with them. Yes. That's right. We don't want to have demon faith. Demon faith is yeah. just knowing some things and never acting. Yeah. Wow. That's, good. That's what the demons do. They believe yeah. and tremble, but they never, they, never, they never stayed in line with what they knew, and therefore they were cast out of heaven and became right. demons. They were once right. angels, right? Yeah. Amen. Verse 20, But what about you, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works? Or could we say these actions he took? Yes. When he offered Isaac his son upon the altar, seest thou how perfect, how faith wrought with his works and by works was faith made perfect? Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, I want to see uh, verse 22, and this is out of the common English Bible. It says, see his faith was at work along with his actions. Mm, that's good. His faith Amen. was at work along with his actions. If his actions aren't moving, his faith isn't moving. Yeah. In fact, his faith was made complete by his faithful actions. Amen. How many of you know it's not enough to have faith? We have to have faith that completes things. Yeah. Yeah. And it says his faith was complete. By faithful actions that Amen. he took. God has been holding something before me. And it's called not just faith, but actions. Act, 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 act. And, uh, but not just talking to me about acting. He's talking to me about acting without thinking. That's good. Wow. That's good. Wow. Yeah. Because it's when we think that we quit acting. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking acts of faith. Yes. That's what causes us to step back. We think about it. We pause a minute mm. yeah. and think right. about it. Every yeah. pause is a struggle we have to overcome. Yeah. If the more we pause, the more we're going to struggle. There you go. Amen. Just think without acting. Yes. Can I say this? Excuse me. Act without thinking. Let's put it that way. <laughs> A lot of people are thinking without acting. And that's the problem. I'm talking about acting without thinking, or we could say it this way to help people who say, well, I've got to think. Okay. Acting without overthinking. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I've been in services that, with Dad Hagen, and he was endeavoring to get us to flow with the Spirit, you know? And you could see the thinking on people's faces as they'd sit there and he would, you know, fall out under the power or he would go like this and people just sit and you could see their thinking. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Right. 
But those who didn't think and just started acting, they got in a flow that the thinking ones didn't get in. I watched, we were in a service. My husband made this statement. And you know, God will do things and you'll say, well, that doesn't make sense. That's why we act without thinking. Because things don't make sense. When the Spirit of God tells us to do something, the things He directs us in will not make sense to the natural mind. And if you start thinking about it, you won't jump into what He's saying. You'll, you will start calculating it. You will start trying to figure it out. We all do that, right? And if we get in that mental arena. And so one time my husband, we were in a service and he said, by the, power, by the anointing, he said, the power of God is in this aisle. It's in this aisle. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Because sometimes God will manifest in a located way. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. Yes. Amen. That's good. That's and good. the moment he said that, the moment he said that, you know, and most were just kind of, oh, power of God. <laughs> they're, they're just, look, oh, they're thinking. Yeah, they're thinking. I love what the pastor did. The pastor was in his 60s at the time. And the pastor was sitting right here. Ed was standing right here and said, the power of God's right here in this aisle. Without a pause, the pastor died. He acted without thinking. That's what faith is about. Acting without thinking. And if you don't, your faith will die. That's it. The Bible says these, these, the faith with no actions is dead. It's, not, it's lifeless. Amen. Amen. That's right. So God has been holding this before me, acting without thinking. Uh -huh. Before you can even think, just do it. Just do it. Amen. Anybody ever have to deal in your own life with procrastination? <laughs> this word. <Yeah>. Tomorrow. <laughs> Tomorrow, tomorrow. My body looks like it does because of procrastination. I carry the extra weight because of procrastination. Right? Yep. I'm not saying anything about you. I'm just talking about me. But everything that is not different that we want to be different is not different for one reason, procrastination. That's it. Amen. Yes. We're going to do it tomorrow. I'm going yeah. to believe God tomorrow. I'm going to study more tomorrow. I'm going to pray more yeah. tomorrow. I'm going to give more tomorrow. I'm going to, amen. Amen. Can I tell you how to get past yes. procrastination? Where procrastination is never an issue anymore. Quit thinking. Just do it. <laughs> procrastination is nothing but calculating. Oh, when yeah, I'm right. going to, I'm going to do, just quit thinking and just do. Just quit thinking. Listen, Nike wasn't the one to come up with that just do it slogan. <laughs> Amen. Uh, go with me, if you would, to Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. <clears throat> and uh, we're going to look real quickly. I just want to look at a phrase here yeah. regarding Abraham. Verse 17. God was speaking to Abraham, Romans 4, 17 says, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Now see if Abraham would have thought about that, he's going to go, what, 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 what do you mean you have made me the father of many nations? I don't even have a child. At the time God saying this to him, he has no child. Mm -hmm. But God says, I've made you a father of many nations. No, notice Abraham didn't just sit and think about that yeah. to see if this was true or not. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were, who against hope believed in hope. Now see, he didn't sit and think about it. He believed it. He believed it. He believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken. So what, what did he believe? He, he just believed what God said. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm, I'm the father of many nations. Amen. God said it. I'm the father of many nations. He didn't think about, now how's he going to do it? Well, That's he didn't right. do that. He just said, okay, I'm the father of many nations. And of course, his name became that, right? Uh -huh. Amen. So he says this, <clears throat> uh, he believed according to, 
to what was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not. What's that mean? He didn't think about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. He considered not his own body. He didn't sit and think about how his body could not do this. He's a 90-year-old man when God said this. He was not thinking. He just Amen. believed without thinking. Right. Amen. Amen. You understand that? Yeah. This is the kind of life that lives... Uh, a supernatural way. You just do it without thinking. Yeah. Why? Because God said, I'm just going to do it without thinking. Yeah. And it says, And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead. Don't even think about your dead body, Abraham. <laughs> your body can't produce this. Don't think about that. Don't think about that. This is why he had strong faith. He didn't think about it. Right. He considered not. That's what he, he just didn't think about it. He considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. So notice says he didn't think about his body and he didn't think about anybody else's body either. Her body can't produce, my body can't produce. He didn't think about that. Why? Because if he thought about the wrong thing, he would not act. That's right. He would not, it would affect his believing. Yes, yes. It would affect his believing. And God has been holding this before me that we need to... Uh, we need to understand believing is an action word. Yes. It's not a co simply a confession word. It's an action word. Amen. And if we're not acting, we're not believing. Because faith is an act. Amen. Faith, confession is one way to act. But our confession is not to be a substitute for further action. Some just sit and say, well, I'm confessing, I'm confessing. Yeah, but if there's further actions that can ta be taken, you better take them. Because confess we confess so that we'll know how we should act. Yes. Amen. We confess by His stripes I'm healed, then that, that helps us know how we're going to act. Okay, today I'm going to act healed. I'm going to act healed. If my body were healed... That's the way I'm going to act because I just confess by his stripes I'm healed. So since I confess that, now I know how to act. Yes. Confession is not a substitution for further action. Yes. It is to direct you in how to act. My God shall supply all my needs. Therefore, I know I can be generous to give because I just said God would supply all my needs. So I'm not going to withhold and just confess and confess and not act in my giving. That's right. But so many people have made confession the end of their action. Mm -hmm. Confession is to direct your actions. Amen. And people will say, but my God shall supply all my needs. Okay, then do it. Act like that. Hallelujah. I love when Dad Hagen told the story. My children and I so, so often refer to this at times when we come up against a wall. Anybody ever come up against a wall? Yeah. What's a wall? It's circumstances that, that set themselves up against your progress. And Dad Hagen was, of course, he would drive these old used cars to all these crusades and meetings in his earlier years of ministry. Didn't have a new car for years. And... Uh, then, of course, he had payments on him. And he remembered he, uh, he, on one particular trip, he had gotten four months behind on his car payment. Mm -hmm. And they notified him and said, we're coming to pick up your car tomorrow. So he drove in that night after a meeting, got in bed, and uh, laid down. The devil said, what you going to do? What you going to do? How's the traveling minister travel with no car? What you going to do? They're going to come pick up your car tomorrow. You're going to come pick up your car tomorrow. What you going to do? What you going to do? What is that? Thinking arena. Uh, Thinking realm. Yes. Thinking arena. What you going to do? What you going to do? The devil will love to help you think. Mm -hmm. And I love what he did. He said, you know what I'm going to do, devil? I'm going to act like the word's true. I'm going to go to sleep. See, if the word's true... You're not going to stay up and think about it. And the next morning, somebody came and brought him money. And of course, he was able to keep that car from going back. But uh, 
my, my son and I, whenever we run up against a wall, he'll say, you're coming to get your car tomorrow, what you gonna do? <laughs> and it's to remind us, yes. we're gonna act like the word's true. Yes. And every time he asks that question, we say, we're gonna act uh -huh. like the word's true. That's right. No, they're not coming to get our car tomorrow, but we understand when uh -huh. you're up against what looks like nothing is, nothing is there. We're gonna act like, like the word yes. is true. Yes. Yes. That's what believing is, yeah. acting yeah. like the word is true. Yeah. And if you're acting like the word is true, it's going to show up on your face. Yes. You're not going to be under, under a cloud. You're not going to want people to know that you're faced with something. That's right. Because you're acting mm -hmm. like the word, is, not just believing, you're acting Amen. like the word is true. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Why is that? Because believing calls for action. When God says something to us, it's not calling us to think about it. It's calling us to act like it. Yes. Amen. 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 Faith is an act. Yes. I said faith is an act. Amen. Amen. Yes, that action can include a confession, but do not think just because you're good at making confessions that you're good at acting. Pray the Lord. Amen. Amen. Can I, let me talk to you about what actions look like. Yeah. God spoke to me that, uh, <clears throat> that he was going to give me another home. And uh, that home wasn't for sale. And I had, uh, it, it was Sister Amy Silk McPherson's home and the four square denomination had just bought it in 2005 and they paid a million dollars for it, then they put a million and a half dollars into just the, the structural side of the house. Because it was uh, built in 19, finished in 1929, so it had all these years, and you know earthquakes and stuff in California, they're a blessing. <laughs> <laughs> it helps you find weak spots. Yeah. And, <laughs> So God told me that a year and a half before I ended up buying it. But once he told me that, we had been given tours. The Bible school students had taken a tour of the home. That's how we first got in it. And I recognized when I got on the property, my spirit started going, you know, supercharged. <laughs> yeah. My spirit got thrilled. And I thought, why is my spirit thrilled? And then two weeks later, God said, I'm going to give you that home. So I went back the next time because we took lots of pictures, you know, uh, when we were in it the first time. But the second time, the, they're taking the second year students through it. And so they said, do you want to go? I said, yeah, I'm going to go see my house. <laughs> so I pull out my camera and I'm opening closets. <laughs> I'm asking questions about the sewage. I'm asking questions about the pipelines. I'm asking electrical questions. Why? I am acting yes. as though what God said is true. Amen. And I had over 500 and something pictures, and I just told one staff member and my children about it. So all of them are there, and we're all taking pictures of every angle. <laughs> then they're sending me all these pictures after we did the tour. And I sat every day, and I looked at what, I was, at what was mine. Before it was in my name, it was in my heart. That's it. That's it. Amen. And so every day, every day that I was home, before I bought it, they had a parking pad across the street from that, and that was part of the, the castle's property. And so uh, I would go sit on that parking pad because it's just, a, it's just like a one-lane road. It's up on top of a hill. And so it's just like a one lane. So you, there's, no, there's nowhere to park. So I would pull up in that parking pad right across the street. I knew it probably belonged to the castle, and it's probably, probably private property, but... Since it's mine, I felt okay <laughs> <laughs> about being a trespasser. And I would sit there as long as I dared before they, you know, called for the police. And 
every day I was home, I would drive up there and I would look at it and plan and talk to myself about it and talk to the house and say, I'm going to live in you. Yeah. You're going to be my home and I'm going to do this to you and I'm going to do that to you. And I mean, by the hour I planned why I was acting like yes. what God said was That's true. Right. I wasn't sitting at home trying to figure out, oh my gosh, how am I going to pay for this? Because let me tell you something. When God said that to me, I owed six and a half million dollars. You understand? Personal and ministry combined. Six and a half million dollars. This does not look like an opportune time to be buying another home. Yeah. If I would have thought about it, That's it. Yeah. Yeah. I would have dismissed myself from what God had already included me in on. Yeah. God's already included you in. Don't dismiss yourself by thinking about it. Amen. Just do it. Amen. Whatever He's told you to do, just do it. Amen. Amen. Faith leads you to act. And until we're acting, we're not in faith yet. Well, praise the Lord. So today, I'm on that home. Paid cash for that home. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God was paying off other debt yeah. all the whole time yeah. he was working. Because you say, well, why, why, God, are you saying you're going to give me a home when I owe so much already? Why tell Abraham you're going to be the father of many nations yeah. when you're 90? Why didn't you do it when you're 30? That's right. Before your body was unable to produce. Why didn't you do it then? Why didn't you tell Sarah you're going to have a child while her womb is still young? Because God loves doing it when you can't. That's why he uses the most inopportune times. Because it's a time you can't. Yes. It's a time that you can't. Amen. And this is where many Christians miss it because God will tell them something and they'll recognize this is an inopportune time. I'm not going to do that. Then you can't and he can't. That's right. Very good. Amen. You say there's nothing God can't do. Oh, there's a lot he can't do. There's a lot he can't do. He can't bring into our lives what he has for our lives if we do not act. He can't. He can't lie. He can't steal. He can't violate his word. And if we don't move on his word, he can't violate his word. Amen. Faith that acts without thinking. The more you think about it, the more you give yourself something to overcome. I have learned, I have learned this. I've even, I've even come to the place where I quit having preferences. Well, I don't prefer to go there. Just quit that. I don't prefer to do that. Just quit that. Because if God tells me to do it, now I have a preference I have to overcome. So I just don't put a preference in place. Because then when God says do it, all right, fine with me. Because that's what I prefer. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. How many times have we struggled financially over something God told us to give? Why? Because we thought about it. Every time you think about it, you give yourself something to overcome. Abraham considered not. He didn't think about it. He would not take it into his mental calculations. The mind loves calculating things, handling things, figuring it out. And uh, if we're going to go on with what God has and have a strong faith, we have to realize it's not about just what I say. It's about what I do. Amen. 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 Well, Amen. praise the Lord. Amen. I remember when Ed and I, <clears throat> we uh, started operating with tongues and interpretation. Those two gifts of the spirit. Mm -hmm. And uh, he would speak in tongues and then come up, you interpret. I loved it. I loved it one time because Ed would always, you know, we went to Brother Norville's church one time years ago. 
And so Ed operated in tongues and interpretation. And so he gave the tongue, I gave the interpretation. And then I had to leave and go on to do some other meetings or go back home or something. And so he stayed another day. And so when I ta- you know, called him the next day, well, how's it going there? Oh, fine. I said, well, how was the service? He said, fine. He said, Brother Norville preach. I said, good. And I said, uh, how'd that go? And he said, well, he said he did tongues and interpretation. I said, who did the tongue? He said, Norville. <laughs> I said, who got to interpret? He said, me. He said, I didn't do very good. <laughs> I said, yeah, because you're, you always take the tongue and you had me the interpretation. And I was loving that someone handed him the interpreting part. <laughs> because when you do, go to do the interpreting part, you're going to need to have some articulation of some things. And even if you give a tongue and you miss it, ain't nobody know it. <laughs> But I recognized this, and I don't know how I knew. I just seemed to know. Sometimes the anointing would be very strong, and then the utterance for the interpretation came easily. But sometimes it was not that strong, and you had to draw out of you. It, you, you know, you'd have to dip down because the people weren't drawing, uh-huh. and so you were the yeah. only yeah. one drawing. Yeah. And... Uh, I learned this, Ed would give the tongue, and while he, I, I tell you, for the first, I don't know, year or two, I'd just go to every service, oh, don't give a tongue, don't give a tongue, don't give a tongue, don't give a tongue. Why? Because the mind is, sure, yeah. and so I, uh, I thought, you know, this is ridiculous, because Nancy, every time you get up, the interpretation comes, so quit dreading your life. <laughs> And so I finally learned I don't even touch it in my thought life, whether he's going to give a tongue. Because I would recognize the interpretation would always be there. But let me, ha- let me tell you how I tapped into the interpretation that was always there. Because mm-hmm. the interpretation can be there and you not tap into it. Mm-hmm. And I'm not just talking about interpretation here. I'm talking about following what's in yes. you. Amen. Is that as soon as he would get... He would speak that tongue. You know, he would, be, he would have on a mic, but I wouldn't. I'd need to grab a handheld. I'd just start grabbing that thing and start talking. Even before I knew what I was going to say. I'd just, just start talking. If I pause and let my mind kick in, I just stepped out of the flow and I would miss what my spirit was saying. I knew if I paused, I'd get in my mind. I had to learn the moment he's done giving that tongue, I'm talking. If I paused for just five seconds, you know, just try to act like I'm in the flow. (laughs) Or say, thank you, Jesus. Uh -uh -uh -uh. That's not it. He's not giving me a praise. Uh He's giving me an interpretation. I had to immediately step into that thing. Immediately, without pause. That's how I would step into the flow every time. And I could tell only once or twice did I struggle because I had paused before I started. You understand that? That is a faith principle there. Once something is said, step into it. Don't think about it. Just do what's in your spirit to do. I'm not talking about you figuring out something in your mind and then acting. I'm talking about, you know, in your spirit what you're supposed to do. Amen. You yes. say, well, no, I don't. Yes, I dare to say you really know your spirit, yes. what your spirit is, is leading you to do. I'm not talking about you hearing a voice. I'm not talking about you having a feeling. I'm saying on the inside of you, you, you know on the inside of you, you know what, I should do this. Amen. Uh, yeah. Then just step out as quick as you have the opportunity and do it. Yes. Amen. Amen. If you pause, you're giving the mind time. And if you give the mind time, the devil will talk you out of it. Because he uses your mind to cause you to step back. That's right. Amen. Amen. I remember, uh, like I said, when Ed went home to be with the Lord, I had six and a half million dollars of debt that had to be dealt with. A million of that was needed like today. 
And uh, I remember I woke up one morning and the Spirit of God said to me, I want you to send such and such a minister a certain amount of money. And it was the largest personal offering that Ed and I, throughout our, our marriage, would have given. And especially now in the midst of my greatest need, God's pulling out bigger numbers than he's ever pulled out before. If I'd have thought about that, uh -huh. yeah. Come on. see, that doesn't make sense to the mind. Uh -huh. yeah. sure. right. Right. But he said to me, I want you to send a certain, certain minister this amount of money. I knew this. I don't have that. I don't have that. So when he said that amount to me, I knew this. It must be on its way. Hallelujah. Or he wouldn't have told me what to give what was not on its way. If I don't have it, it's on its way. Now, it's, he's telling me that amount because it needs my faith for it to show up. So I said, Father, I don't have that money right now. But since you said that, it must be on its way. You come. You yes. come into my hand. Yes. Within 10 days, that amount of money came. Mm. With the amount enough to tithe on it. Mm. See, I was giving it to a ministry. I was giving it to another minister, but my tithe goes to my local church. So just by giving it to a minister doesn't mean my, my church gets left out of this equation. So God gave me the amount with the tithe. So I tithed on it. And I called my financial gal and I said, now the man I'm going to be giving this to is out of the country. I don't care. You come over here and you overnight this money to him. Why? If I keep it in my hands, I have opportunity to think about it. I'm shutting the door to the devil working on my mind by acting. The quicker you act, you shut the door for the devil to harass you and slow you down through the mental arena and trouble you through the mental arena. I'm not going to give the devil opportunity to talk to me about how I need this. I know how I need this and I don't need him articulating it. So I immediately, I said, you come over here and let's overnight this to him. And we did. And within 10 days... I received, I received 25 times Glory. what I gave him. Glory. Thank you, Lord. A quarter of a million Thank dollars Lord. within the next 10 days came. Why? Because I didn't think about the obedience. I just did it. Just do it. Just do it. Act before you think. The world will tell you think before you act. But act before you think. Act on your spirit. Act on your spirit. Amen. Now, see, you were real thrilled when I first started. but Amen. What's it say in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5? Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. Casting down mm -hmm. imaginations. It doesn't just say pushing back. It says casting down. Do, does it, do these words not draw up a very aggressive way of dealing with thinking? Cast it down. You don't just... Let me, let, me, let me give you an example of what casting down looks like. My dad, uh, you know, was a cotton and wheat farmer. There's nothing my dad couldn't build, nothing my dad couldn't make. He was, he was a, a jack of all trades. He just had that creative ability. I'm talking about all trades within his scope, you know. Anything to do with building, anything to do with farming, anything to do with putting engines together. I mean, this man, he could do it. And it was so great always having around you a can-do man. Yeah. Yeah, sure. 
my oldest son is that way. There's nothing he can't build. There's nothing he can't fix. He builds me furniture. He, he fixes our computers. He, he fixes cars. He can take an engine apart. He can take a computer apart. He's just a man of, of, with his hands. It's, he got it from my dad. My dad was so much like that. Ed was a measure like that, but Stephen is really a replica of my dad. So one time the family went out and we were going to go fishing on one of dad's farms. He had a, a he had a, you know, a, a creek and stuff that ran through his land and he had a big, a big water supply there. And so uh, we, we got together, my mom, my sister, me, my dad, I don't remember who else was there. But we went and uh, there was a boat turned up, you know, like a canoe type boat turned upside down on the, the bank. And so Daddy just flipped that thing over, and we got in, and we went out to the middle of the lake there. And we're out in the middle of the lake, and all of a sudden my sister says, Oh, my gosh. And there's a big rat in the boat <laughs> that he had been up under the, one of the seat areas, and when Daddy flipped it, he was still in there. And so we get out to the middle of the, the lake, and this rat becomes visible, and there's girls. <laughs> My dad didn't, you know, he didn't care, you know. But the girls, you know, we're, you know, letting him know there's a rat. So we all kind of pulled up our feet, and Daddy just, you know, takes us back. He paddles us back over to the side. We all jump out, and then Daddy gets out his pocket knife. And this rat is back in the corner, and there's a seat that goes all the way to the corner, so he's completely hemmed in, and Daddy's just going... Just, he's just poking until he feels like he hits something. Yeah. So he hits something, pulls it out, and he's got that knife through the rat's leg. So you go, uh, he's a rat. Come on. <laughs> Quit watching the news so much. <laughs> They're not creatures of comfort. Yeah. They are disease breeding. They carry the curse all over them. So, you know, they got this long tail. So Daddy stuck him so that he could, you know, he could grab him. He grabbed him by the tail. Daddy jumps out. He's just holding, you know, the thing by the tail. This, this is, and that's what I like, real men. Real men. He has this thing by the tail. He goes over, there's a big rock, and Daddy just starts swinging. <laughs> Bam! <laughs> we, we loved watching that. Loved it. Loved it. <laughs> that didn't anymore hurt that rat. He took off running. <laughs> but before he ran, he got himself cast down. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That, when it says casting down imaginations, you can't be kind to these things. That's right. Amen. That's right. You can't be kind yeah. to wrong thinking Amen. and treat it rightly. You better be aggressive. You're not doing that to my life. You're not That's doing right. that to my body. You're not doing that to my home. That's, when it says casting down, it doesn't mean just push it out of the way. It means an aggressive action. Why? Because your mind will rob from you. All that God has for you. Amen. And the devil works through the battlefield of the mind to rob from us. So what we have to do is we have to think before we give our, excuse me, we have to act before we give ourselves the opportunity to think our way out of it. That's very good. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's like this. You go, I don't know all the sets to make. Act on the one step uh -huh. That's right. that you know. Yes. God will not lay out the entire course before you. He will give you the next step because until you've taken this one, you don't need that one. And faith doesn't need all the steps. It only needs one. The more you know God, the less He has to give you before you act. Mm. The less He has to tell you before you act. If you're wanting to be told a lot of the info, you don't know Him right. Mm. 
There's more knowing that you need to have. Amen. Because the better you know him, the less he has to tell you before you'll act. So just act on the one thing. When God told me that was going to be my house, I had no idea how he's going to do it. But I didn't ask him to tell me how he was going to do it before I would go and talk to the thing. Amen. I acted as far as I could. You can act without committing yourself financially. When God puts it in your heart to have a new home, when God puts it in your heart to have a new car, you can act without committing yourself financially. I'm not telling you to go and order a car when you don't have any. I'm not telling you to do that. I, but I am saying you can go down to the dealership and sit in all of them. It's free to sit, baby. Free to sit. Make movement as far as you can. Well, God, God's been dealing with me about a new home. You won't get it sitting at home confessing it. That's right. That's right. You have got to get out, go walk through model homes, walk through homes for sale, get up and act. Act, 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 act. Until you have acted, you don't need what you're believing for. That's right. Until you've acted. People are wanting God to bring them stuff and they've not ever acted as far as they could. Faith is an act. Don't limit it to stop at a confession. Confession is to direct your acting. And if you say God's going to give me a new home, then if you believe that, you're out looking at them. If you're not looking, you don't believe you're getting one. You're just wanting one, but you're not believing you're getting one. Well, I just want God to give me what He wants. He's not going to live in it. You are. You go pick what you want. He'll give you what you want. He's already got a nice house. Amen. And walk through it with your mind turned off. Yes. Walk through it with your spirit turned on, That's but your good. mind turned That's off. Good. Because your mind will say, well, you just don't need it this big. Uh, you don't need something this nice. No, I don't need it, but I sure want it, so hey. Yeah. That's right. It's not right. about what I need. It's about what will make my joy full. That's right. Oh. Amen. Amen. My joy is fuller yeah. in a house that's nice. Yes. yes. <laughs> Brother Copeland told the story that I guess their main, one of their main buildings that they have there at his ministry headquarters, he, was, uh, he had several ministers that had come, and he was giving them a tour right after it was completed. And as he walked through the building, he would say, now, see, we were going to do this, but we were able to save money by doing this route, and we were going to do this, but we were able to cut back over here and do this and save money. And he says, I'm going through the building almost apologetic for you know, we saved money here, we saved money here, we saved money here. And uh, after he got done with his tour, and he was the only one left in the building, God said, I want to talk to you. <laughs> he said, okay. He said, uh, if you saved all the money you told them about, where is it? <laughs> he said, well, I don't have any. He says, no, because you didn't save money. You just cheated yourself. That's it. Amen. Those are things you could have had, but you thought about it and cheated yourself. Let that one sink down. The more you think about things, the more you will talk yourself out of what you really wanted, what your heart really wanted. Come on. You're getting ready to build. Amen. You're building. Yes. We're building. Everything that's in your pastor's heart, say, Pastor, everything. Don't cut corners. Don't cut back. Yes. Don't every everything yes. that's in your heart. Yes. We're not talking you out. We're not going to look at it and say, Well, we could have saved money there. Can I can I tell you something that really puts people's minds on tilt? I am not called to save money. <laughs> Let 
I'm going to call to save money. Yes. I am called to complete what I'm born for. Hallelujah. I am called to complete the vision and whatever money that takes, I'll spend it. Hallelujah. Very good. I am not out trying to save money. Well, if you're a faithful steward, why don't I be a faithful steward of what God says that he'd supply all my needs? Why don't I be a faithful steward of that? Having something nice is not waste if it brings me joy. That's right. Amen. I have things in my home that are there for no function, just my joy. Just my joy. In fact, the most expensive things, and you would choke if I told you what I paid. The most expensive things in my home have no function, but other I look at it and say, I'm glad I got that. It makes my joy full. And that is its highest function. Make me joyful. Does God need the streets in heaven to be gold? Does he need them to be gold? No, they don't need to be gold. You can work on dirt, you can walk on concrete, you can walk on asphalt, but the joy of putting his children that you get to walk on. It's not necessary. It's not necessary that the streets be gold. It's not necessary. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But what a joy for the father to treat his family that way. Now, some of you are dealing with the way you've been raised when you're listening to me. Let's keep dealing with it. Let's keep dealing with it. That's right. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Well, I think we ought to be faithful stewards. I'm not, listen, anything that brings me joy, God authored. He says, I give you richly all things to enjoy. Not all things to save. Yes. Right. Amen. Amen. All things to enjoy. If I enjoy it, I'm buying it. You understand? If I enjoy it and I want it inside, I'm talking about here. I'm buying it. Now, if I have to buy it so that I feel better about myself, my faith won't work. Because things don't make me feel better about who I am. Things serve who I am. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. 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 That's good. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm not trying to save money. Yeah. I'm trying to stretch my faith. Sure. Yes. Most people are trying to save money and it's costing them their faith to do it. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Yeah. That's They're it. cutting back and cutting back That's so they don't have to use their faith. Yeah. God is going to lead on. you based on what's best Amen. for your faith. Yes. Amen. What, what's yeah. best for your faith? Yeah. Thank you, Father. My son, now see, uh, about a month before my husband went home to be with the Lord, he went and bought himself a luxury car. And he bought me a luxury van. <laughs> <laughs> I'd had vans for 25 years. You know when you got kids and you're a pastor and you're hauling stuff all the time? It's like my pickup truck. Yeah. So I always had a van, you know. And so he bought himself a car and he bought me a new van and... Because that's what I said I wanted. But I noticed when I got in his car, God said, this is the one, get it. And I thought, well, why is God talking to me about his car? Because when it died a month later, it became my car. And God was giving me, isn't this something God told him to do this? Why? Because God knew I probably wouldn't have bought myself a new car the moment he died because of the six and a half million dollars debt. But God was showing me, you don't have to cut back. Just because someone isn't here anymore doesn't mean you have to have less than. So we had the nicest car, the most expensive car we'd ever had. Now I got two. I got my choice. Why? Because God's not trying to save money. He's trying to let me know I'll take care of you no matter what you're saying. Who's here, who's not here. 
Amen. Abundance is still the flow he authored for us. Yes. When people leave your life, abundance didn't. Abundance did not. Yes. Amen. God's plan for abundance Amen. did not. So don't cut back because of who left. Good. Very good. So anyway, uh, I had that car and uh, it came time for another one. And my son said, now mom, he said, now let me tell you why Ed bought this car. He was on the Autobahn, and it was the fastest car on the Autobahn. <laughs> That's why I bought it. So I had the fastest car on the Autobahn in Murrieta, California. <laughs> so it had the, like the biggest engine you can get. Yeah. It's a great car, great car. You would put your foot, you go, oh, man, you put your foot on that thing. It would throw you back in your seat. I go, oh, that feels so good. <laughs> I'd put somebody in the car and say, feel this. Yeah. They go, bam. <laughs> Just watch them go like that. <laughs> so Stephen said to me, he said, Mom, he said, uh, when it came time for another car, he says, you know, you don't need a car with this big of engine. <laughs> I said, yeah, you're absolutely right, because I certainly don't use all this engine's capable of. It's not even legal to use all this engine <laughs> is capable of. I don't use it. And he said, and if you don't have such a big engine, it won't cost so much. And I said, you're exactly right. So i tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to buy me a car that costs more. <laughs> yes. Amen. Why? I'm not trying to cut back. I'm That's trying right. to keep the push on my faith. faith. I've got yeah. to keep pushing my faith, yes. do what's best for my faith. It would be yes. cheaper yes. to cut back, but it would cost me the use of my faith. Yes. Yes. Amen. I've got to keep myself on the edge of my faith where I've got to always be reaching Amen. and reaching and reaching. What's in your spirit and what your spirit will direct you will always keep you reaching. And if you think about it, you won't go where your spirit is is leading you to go because it doesn't make sense. That's right. Amen. So I bought the nicest car we've ever had, the most expensive car we ever had, and in about a couple months, I'm fixing to get me another one. <laughs> Why? Is it about things? No, it's about my faith. Yes. I am not going to do what's cheapest so my faith can relax. If my faith relaxes, I get it. It, it, it can be. It can dry up. Sure. The part that isn't used dries up. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Your pastors are doing you a kind of favor by including your faith on this building. Amen. Because without it, your faith would be less than. Mm -hmm. You understand? Your faith would be less than what it's going to be if they didn't have this project in front of you. So you obey what's in your spirit without thinking. Without thinking. I can't tell you we, I, I was showing our congregation just this past Sunday when I preached, we put up what we gave in 2018 as a ministry. We gave 39% of our income away to other ministers, other ministries. You understand? We have a $3.1 uh, million dollar debt on the church building, and God keeps leading me to give more and more away. Not pay off the debt, not pay off the debt. Give out the seed. Uh -huh. Give out the That's seed. Right. Why? Because the harvest is with the Amen. seed. Amen. 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 Doesn't make sense. Sure. It does not make sense uh -huh. that when I go on the road and God says, give a certain amount of money uh -huh. to this church. Give, the, give this, give that. Uh -huh. It doesn't make sense. Sure. I just do it without thinking. Sure. Why? Because Amen. God's taken me somewhere where my thinking can't take That's me. It. Amen. That's it. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And I'm not going to let my thinking dismiss me from where he's taking yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Very good. Amen. I don't look at financial statements to, to give me permission to obey God. Uh -huh. mm. That's good. Amen. I don't look, say, I don't call the office and say, do we have this in the account? If God told me to give this, I'm giving it. You better figure out a way to make it work. <laughs> yeah. You'd pull it from whatever account you got to because I'm doing what God told me to do. Yes. Money is serving the plan. Yeah. I'm not serving money. Money is for one reason, and that's to fulfill the vision. That's it. That's it. 
Amen. It's a tool. Amen. It's a tool. Amen. So tell your pastors, get the nicest flooring, get the nicest Amen. chandeliers, Amen. get the nicest Amen. everything. Amen. You say, well, I'm trying to save money. Then you need to get on God's agenda because he's not trying to save money. God is trying to develop our faith. Now, can I tell you, Jesus appeared to Dad Hagen one time, and in the course of it, he said, the church building, this isn't what Dad Hagen said, this is what Jesus told Dad Hagen, the church building should be the nicest building in town. There are other companies that do important business, but no company is doing as important Amen. business as we're doing. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. When I love going over to some of the other countries and seeing these wonderful cathedrals or seeing, get online and look at these fabulous edifices. I mean, built in the 1400s, 1500s, 1600s. I go, they had the idea. Today, they're trying to save money. Back then, they committed generations to building, to building that church. Financially, they committed generations. Why? Because what God, what represents God should be the best. Now, I know there was a lot of things that might not have been ethical in that, but I'm talking about a mindset. The mindset, yes. Amen. Talking about a mindset. Amen. If God wants it for his people. He wants it for you. If you're saving yourself money, he'll let you. But if you'll believe him for abundance, he'll empower you. Amen. Amen. Dad Hagen, for years in traveling ministry, had these used cars, you know. He finally got to a place where he could buy the first new car in his whole life. And in that time, the top of the line was a Cadillac. Mm -hmm. And that's what he wanted was a Cadillac. He bought himself a Cadillac. Within about three weeks of buying it, his ministry hit some financial rough places. And he's sitting at home on his couch lamenting the fact that he had just bought, for the first time in his life, he just bought this new car. And he's sitting there thinking, well, I'll just take it back down to the dealership and turn it back in because I, I cannot get behind. Well, the thing is, is that, what was it? He stepped into another level of increase. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so the push came on the finances to get him to back out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Every time you go to reach yes. to get yeah, into yeah. the next level, there's going to be something that's going to rise in your finances that's going to make yeah. sense of why you shouldn't be at the next level. Try, why? To try to push you back to the yeah. former level <clears throat> so that you don't keep Amen. pressing. That's right. And that's exactly why that showed up three weeks afterwards, yes. to try to talk him out of abundance. Yes. Just stay at the level you're at. Just stay at the level you're at. Don't go further. Faith won't stay at the level it's at. That's Faith right. is always acting. Mm -hmm. And in front of it will be the next level. Yes. So as he's sitting there, okay, I'll just go back down to the dealership. I'll tell him I cannot make the payment. I'd rather do that than have a repossession. Mm -hmm. As he's considering this, all of a sudden Jesus stands right in front of him. You go, over a car? <laughs> and Jesus said to him, do you know what kind of car I want you to have? He goes, no. He said, I want you to have the kind of car you want. Jesus was not appearing to him over a car. He was appearing to him over a way of thinking. Amen. Amen. He knew that Dad Hagen's voice would be moving into the lives of so many multiples yeah. 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 of millions of people. And he couldn't have him thinking wrong yes. about that. Because if he tripped over a car, how that would be mul multiplied in the people he yeah. spoke in yeah. to put the limits on, put the limits yeah. on. And Jesus said, I want you to have the kind of car you want. You know what kind of house he wants you to have? The kind you want. You know what kind of business he wants you to have? The kind you want. So 
Don't cut back on what you want because you thought about it. That's very good. Follow what you, the real you. Amen. What do you want? Amen. Follow. Now, see, when I say faith is an act, what I'm telling you is this. Follow how your spirit is leading you to act. Don't just mentally grab Come an on. action. Come on. It's by your spirit because God knows what you can believe for. See, we're all at different levels of spiritual growth and development, right? Yes. One person's faith can lay hold of more or less or whatever. Sure. Yeah. It's not that it's not. It, it, the important thing is not how much faith you have. It's are you using it? Really are you good. acting? That's good. That's right. Amen. So when something is in your heart to do it, it's because the spirit is leading you based on your measure of faith. He knows you can believe for that. Yeah. Now, if you're going to, in your mind, figure out something. Now, see, uh, if you're not careful, let's talk about with healing. Well, uh, I can figure out, okay, well, if I believe I'm healed, I'm throwing my medicine. Well, did that come from your head or your heart? Because sometimes your heart might just say, just go get a checkup. Because the Spirit of God is going to lead you based on your measure of faith. That's right. Right. And he's not going to lead you just based on what you want to do yeah. up here. I don't want to have the operation. Well, that doesn't mean that you have faith not to have the operation. Amen. Very good. Just because you Amen. don't want it. Nobody wants one. Yeah. That's right. yeah. But you have to know what is the sp on the inside. Amen. What is he leading me to do? That's good. Yeah. Because I'm going to tell you the highest thing for you to do is what he leads you to do. Mm -hmm. That's, yes. Amen. Yes. Wonderful. Amen. You yes. understand that? Yes. I may want to pay cash for a house. Listen, we all want that. But how's the Spirit leading you? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Amen? Yeah. How, you have good. to know. So when I say act without thinking, act without formulating your own agenda up here, just act on right. what is in your yes. spirit immediately. Yeah. Just do it. And you'll find yourself stepping into the flow of your heart that you have longed to be in for a long time. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Yes, thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you helped this morning? Hallelujah. Yes. Act without thinking. Act from what the Spirit is leading you to do. If it's in your heart to go find a home, but your head is saying, we can't afford one, you better, you better act without thinking. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Stand with me to your feet. Father, we thank you. We thank you for this glorious life that faith has authored for us. Father, we're hungry. We are so hungry to move into the fullness. And we know this, our mind does not hold the fullness, our hearts is where the fullness flows yes. from. Yes. Yes. So we turn from our minds and we turn toward our spirits. And Father, each and every one of us could sit here this morning and say, uh-huh, I see what I need to do with this. Yeah, I, need, I see what step I need to take here. I see what I should change here. Yeah, I see that. Well, act on what you see. Act on what you see in your spirit. And know this, power meets faith. Mm. Amen. 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 Power meets faith. And faith is an act. So couldn't we say this? Power meets action. Power meets action. <laughs> um, there's a momentum to faith. And I cannot tell you how important that momentum is. Because momentum is one action right after another. Yeah. Right. Just, yeah. just going after it. Like y'all are doing right now with your building program. One action right after another. And if that action ever slows, mm -hmm. that's when things become unsteady. In your life, keep the momentum of faith going. Believe for something every day. Yeah. As a family, you need to have your own family faith projects. Yeah. Every day, bringing your whole family into it. 
and likewise your pastors as pastors and parental figures of this church family. They are to constantly give you faith projects. There are people who say, well, I, I, you know, we just received so many offerings. They're always doing projects. Uh, we're always abounding in the work of the Lord. And there's a lot of people who don't want to be a part of a church with momentum because there's an expectation put on them. But that's how your faith grows. That's how you please God. Your faith just constantly growing and growing. Whenever we were growing up, there were four kids in the family. And so my mother, when she would take us out, my mother had complete, complete hold on all four of us. And uh, before she would get out of a car, we would walk in to go into a store. She would turn around and say, you're not getting anything. Don't walk down a different aisle. You stay with me. I will not find you in the store. You will stay with me. It's not my job to keep you next to me. It's your job to stay next to me. Do not be throwing stuff in the cart. Don't ask me. (laughs) Why? She told us ahead of time so that when we went in, we knew what was expected of us. And she said, and if you do anything that I told you not to, I'll handle you when I get back out to the car. (laughs) That way, because that's fair. fair. That way we could come up to that expectation that was put in front of us. And that's why she didn't have problems with her kids. Three of us are pastors, so she did right. Right. My, my, my sister is the only one that's not in the full-time ministry, but she's, she's a school teacher and part of her local church. So why? Because mother put expectations on our lives and our lives came up to those expectations. Your pastors are putting expectations of faith on your life. Why? So that you can come up to those expectations. Amen. Aren't you grateful? Aren't you grateful? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us for the preaching of God's Word. We trust that your faith and your love for God is stronger than ever before. More information about Stevenson Ministries and Houston Faith Church is available online at HoustonFaith.tv. Chaz and Joni Stevenson are the pastors of a dynamic, growing church in Houston, Texas, and have a New Testament vision of preaching the uncompromised Word of God with the power of the Holy Spirit helping people get saved, and building strong Christians who can impact their world. Houston Faith Church is a place where the love of God is real, where lives are changed, and where followers of Jesus become fishers of men.